Alexey Abramowitz, the CEO of Energia Global. He joins me in the studio now. And you've also advised the Israeli government on their solar energy scheme as well. So, Yossi, let's start with that, with solar energy. So... 90% of the, renew the re renewable energy goal is going to be coming from solar energy. Is that correct? So that is correct. And a lot of this is a bit of a fake out, uh, I'm sorry to say. At a time when the world is looking for real climate solutions, I have historic news for you. And that is from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea, today marks a full month that all the daytime energy needs of Eilat, the hotels, the kibbutzim, all the factories are being met by solar power. Today is the one month anniversary that we're at 100% for a region of Israel. And that should be the model wait, for- Wait, so you have just, wait, hang on, let me just clarify. You have just beaten this goal that I just said then. The 90% renewable energy coming from solar powers, you've just made that 100%. Right, first of all, that's 90% during the day. They're, they're playing with the numbers. What the, the minister's announcement is certainly welcome to go to 30% from a measly 17%. But he's also saying, oh, we're going to keep a 70% gas monopoly at three times the cost, and that's going to contribute still to, to global warming uh, at an unprecedented pace. So the 90% is a bit of a fake out. It's 90% of some hours of the day is what he's saying. We're saying, no, we have achieved today, literally today, wow. 100% in the Arava wow. for a full month going, and that's the model for the state of Israel. That's incredible, Yossi. Con congratulations on Team that. Effort, Team effort, partners, the region, yeah. Well done. So 100% of their power, of the renewable power is solar. 100% of all the electricity oh. during the day in that, that part, is... if you go on vacation to Eilat, you don't have to feel bad about having and the air conditioning turning on. Turning on the lights, turning on the air conditioners, everything 100 is... 100% during the day from the sun. I do feel good about this already. Uh, good. Already. And by 2025, it'll be day and night because we're adding storage. Wow, that's incredible. Wow. So tell us about now, uh, you may have just touched on it, but how, what has your role been in uh, developing this new energy strategy with the government? Well, years ago, I was the first nut who walked into the regulator and handed in the first solar license. And then I had the privilege and some embarrassment of being on the Israeli negotiating team at the Paris Climate Talks, representing the state of Israel and then the 17% uh, goal. But I've been, uh, I met obviously with the minister and I told them this is coming, this 100% is coming, so you better up your game. Um, and I've been meeting with government officials. We now finally have a government, so there's somebody we can lobby. We are preparing now that there's going to be a climate law in the state of Israel, and there's going to be a government decision. And we hope to take that 50, that 30 percent number and go to at least 50 percent uh, by 2030. How possible is that, that that will actually happen? Well, it depends. First of all, there has to be a complete moratorium on greenlighting any gas-fired power plants, because once you greenlight it, you're stuck with that fossil fuel plant for, for a whole generation. So we have to, we need a full moratorium to make room for the solar. The second thing is we need a climate law that, that puts teeth uh, I I into that intention. We have enough rooftops, we have enough open land, 60% you know, of the whole country is a desert and the sun is beautiful and clear. We, we can get there, but so far the government has essentially stood in the way because of the gas rather than really implemented. We should have been at 30% today. But now we only sit at 6.5 percent, is that it's correct? Symbolic, a symbolic amount. And what's, we're a third of the price of natural gas. We bring jobs. This, the $22 billion that's supposed to go in to hit a 30 percent goal is from the private sector. The, the amount of investment that's, that could come into this country if we had a 100 percent daytime goal will be the largest infrastructure investment in the history of the state, and it's from the private sector. It, far, you know, outstripping the gas uh, investment. So we're calling on the government to up, up their goals from a 30 percent uh, to at least 50 percent solar goal by 2030. So what is the government's reasoning for only be, only sitting at 6.5 percent right now? That's incredibly low, especially since you just mentioned as well that it's this is a desert. Solar panel is obviously the most obvious. Yeah. There's 24 different government offices that are uncoordinated, basically, that touch on on this, but there hasn't been leadership. There's been leadership for expensive and polluting natural gas, and and that's what they've been that's what they've been pushing. Uh, so at this point, I think now that we're so much cheaper, we will uh, help them do the right thing and go for that 100% goal like we've achieved in the Arava. 
So you've achieved it. You've, you've achieved it in the south of Israel. What, what, what are the plans next for you? Where are you going to be taking this further? Further up north? Well, um, actually, we're, we're, we're going south. We're going to Africa. Uh, and so uh, there are African ambassadors here, and uh, we bring them down to the Arava, and we show them what 100% looks like, and we say, Your Excellency, would you like, would, would you, do you want one of those? You know, this will power half your country. And uh, they say yes. And now we're, so we, we built in Rwanda. We're supplying 6% of their power. And we're currently building in a country called Burundi. Um, we'll supply 15% of their power. And then soon Liberia, 20%. And uh, South Sudan, hopefully 100% daytime. Right. So Juba, the capital of South Sudan, will be at 100% solar hopefully in the next 18 months. And the state of Israel, we can't do that? Of course we can. Of course you can. We have, I have faith in you, Yossi. Thank if anyone you. can do it, you can do it. Now tell us as well. This is obviously good for the environment, good for global warming. Right. How, how, is it, how does it work for the economy? Oh, it's, it's a great economic stimulator. First of all, we are subsidizing natural gas prices. In other words, the price of electricity could be lower, which was good for the manufacturing sector. And the investment in the jobs will be on the periphery, where people need the jobs. Bedouin, we should be giving Bedouin a 3,000 megawatt quota, let them come up with compromises with the government as long as they get the, the, the jobs that are associated with that. That would be, a, it'd be the economic engine uh, for, for the poorest community on this planet. So it will stimulate the economy, and holding it back would uh, only hurts the Israeli consumer. What are some of the holdbacks? What have some of, what's some of, some of the issues been so far? Yeah, so there's not enough grid lines. So normally, the, the electricity lines go from the north, uh, the polluting power, down to the south. We have to reverse it. We need now more grids from the south to go to the center and the north. Uh, but there's not enough confidence by the investment community because the country has been unclear about this. We need now a law mandates 50 percent uh, renewables by 2030. That, that allows for the grid lines, allows for the rezoning, and the rooftops. 80% of Israeli homes are, are shared homes, mul mm -hmm. you know, multi-floor apartments, mm -hmm. and the regulations don't really encourage this. We need some changes on the regulations uh, as well, but we, we've been blessed with the sun, and we're start of nation. This we should be able to do. And just briefly, how has this been received, your plan's been received by the Israeli public? Well, uh, look, the public is paying too much for electricity right now, and they're just waking up to, to that. <laughs> and uh, so um, we're rolling it out. I'm volunteering with the, the Heschel Center, uh, which is an NGO, and we've been presenting it in different places. And uh, I think they will embrace it. But the, the fossil fuel lobby, just like in Australia and elsewhere in, in the world, is very strong. Mm -hmm. These are entrenched interests. And it's, it's time to give power to the people so that Israel will finally be a renewable light unto the nations. Absolutely. Well, fingers crossed and good luck with it, Yossi. I hope you achieve your goals. Thank you. Shine on. Shine on. Thank you. <laughs> Yossi Ibrahimovic, CEO of Energia Global. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.